jest helikopter. Przed chwilą przeleciał bardzo, bardzo, prawie nad moim domem. Nie wiem, co jest y, grane. Jest dzisiaj... Nie wiem, po co lata ten helikopter tam. Nie wiem, po co lata tam helikopter. Tutaj. Przed chwilą leci w moim kierunku. Nie wiem, dlaczego helikopter tutaj lata. Przed chwilą... Nie wiem, dlaczego nad moim domem tutaj lata helikopter. Bezpośrednio nad moim domem. Proszę popatrzeć, tutaj jest mój dom. Bezpośrednio nad moją posesją lata helikopter. Tutaj, bezpośrednio. To jest właśnie forma zastraszania. Chcę pokazać datę, która dzisiaj jest. Jest dzisiaj 7 listopada. 2019 roku. I've had the story for three years. I've had this interview with Virginia Roberts. We would not put it on the air. Um, first of all, I was told, who's Jeffrey Epstein? No one knows who that is. This is a stupid story. Um, then the palace found out that we had her whole allegations about Prince Andrew and threatened us a million different ways. Um, we were so afraid we wouldn't be able to interview Kate and Will say, oh, that we that also quashed the story. And then, um, and then Alan Dershowitz was also implicated in because of the planes. She told me everything. She had pictures. She had everything. She was in hiding for 12 years. We convinced her to come out. We convinced her to talk to us. Um, it was unbelievable what we had. Clinton. We had everything. I, I tried for three years to get it on to no avail. And now it's all coming out. And it's like these new revelations. And I freaking had all of it. I, I, I'm so pissed right now. Like every day I get more and more pissed because I'm just like, oh my God, we, it was, um, what, what we had was unreal. Other women backing it up. Hey, yep. Brad Edwards, the attorney three years ago saying like, uh, like we, there will come a day when we will realize Jeffrey Epstein was the most prolific pedophile this country has ever known. And, I had it all three years ago. Would you make your right hand, please? Yes. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you? Out? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Robach also has no doubt about what happened to Epstein when he finally was arrested and jailed. So, do I think he was killed? A hundred percent. Yes, I do. Because you want he made his whole living blackmailing people. Yeah. There were a lot of men in those planes, a lot of men who visited that island, a lot of powerful men who came into that apartment. I knew immediately. <clears throat> and they made it seem as though he made that suicide attempt two weeks earlier, but his lawyers claimed that he was roughed up by his cellmate around the neck. That was all like to plant the seed. And then, that's why I really believe it. <laughs>
like really believe it. The last of the leaked tape has Robach talking about alleged Epstein conspirator Gillan Maxwell and how she should be very careful. She's got to have left evidence like, in the you know, unexplained. Well, Gillan Maxwell, who I had all sorts of stuff on her too. I love it. I'm like, it's so funny to hear everyone say her name now because I'm like, oh my God, like I had all the, and everyone's like, who's that? Who cares? I kept getting that. Who cares? Um, she knows everything. She knows, she knows, she That's should, she plan. should be careful. Well, she was his, like, yeah. she went out and recruited all of these girls. Stand by. She should watch her back. Because if she goes, I mean, I'd have like security guards all around me. The brave insider who leaked this tape to us does not know who at ABC News spiked the story, but someone at ABC does. Our question, who killed the Epstein story at ABC News and why? Help us find out. James Goldston is the president of ABC News. things of satanism okay that you have to dress like the, as if there's such a thing as dressing like a satanist or you have to have certain things on your walls in your house or in your garage if you're a satanist well let me tell you something satanists are the owners of banks they own hospitals they own schools okay yeah <laughs> certainly that university right across the road and many people ascribe to this religion in their thoughts, emotions, and actions and do not even understand it because they don't even understand what that belief system is about. They don't understand what that ideology is. They don't know its tenets. So, again, going back to this, if you don't know that there is an objective, meaning in nature difference, okay, between right and wrong, that is a satanic belief system. Morality, it's not right versus left. It's about right versus wrong. This whole left-right paradigm. The people are, oh, you fall in with, with the left, with the Democrats or the right, the Republicans. It has nothing to do with any of that. It's a false paradigm. The, the thing that all of that's a distraction for not getting you to pay attention to and understand is the difference the real, true, and objective difference between right and wrong. And we're going to explore what that is, because it can be known. It can be known, and most people will be shocked and horrified to understand the real differences between right and wrong, because they'll have to look into themselves and recognize in many ways that they are cooperating with wrong. And that they don't really truly know the difference between right and wrong. When you tell people this, I'm telling you, I told this to somebody in a bar once, which was a big mistake of even trying to bring up this, this discussion in that environment. But occasionally I even, you know, make asinine mistakes like that and think I'm going to be talking to even a semi-conscious being when you're talking to a block, okay? So I said, you understand what actual morality is, is true common sense. We're going to look at that term, common sense, and explore what it really means. And she said, so what you're saying is if I think that there's no really objective right and wrong, that I don't have common sense. And I said, yes, that's what it, no. I said, that's not what I think. I'm trying to explain to you that's what it means by definition, not by what I think. 
The definition of common sense is to truly know the difference between right and wrong. And I said, you, uh, because I say that you are, are not fully in that state of awareness, don't even take it personally because m billions of people on the earth are in that same state of awareness. You're, you're not special and it's not a, a personal attack against you. And I thought this person was going to throw a glass at me. I literally got so enraged because she's associating the concept of common sense with that you are functional and can adequately perform the daily activities of living. And that's not what I'm talking about as common sense, okay? Having common sense about, oh, well, I can eat, prepare my meals and eat for myself and wash my own clothes and, you know, go to work. That's not what I'm talking about as common sense. That's your every man's definition or connotation of common sense. We're going to talk about what common sense really is. Okay? A deep understanding of morality, which are the principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong behavior, lies at the very heart of natural law. This is the essence of it, folks, right here. And here's the difference between right and wrong, in a nutshell, about as simply as I am capable of describing it. All right? Now, we use the words correct or to, right to mean correct and moral. When you say, okay, what's five plus five? It's 10. You're right. Meaning, you are correct. That is true. That is the correct answer. That is right. Okay? And then we say, was was uh, stealing from was stealing that money from Jim was that was that right to mean was it a moral behavior so now what why would we use the same word again like the ancient Romans used the same word book and free okay the, the, those two different concepts were represented by the same word liber right and there's a reason because reading will put you on the path to true freedom if you read the right books, okay? Why would in English, in the English language, we not really, we have other words to mean the same concepts, but the word right means two things simultaneously. It means both correct and it means moral. There's a reason, because they mean the same thing. Correct is moral. Correct meaning that is, it is in alignment with that which is true means, literally, by definition, if it is true, then it is moral. The more you are following something that is false, that is not based in truth, the more you are going down the path of immorality, of wrongdoing. So we have to come to know what is true regarding right and wrong, if we are going to be able to correctly, with wisdom, choose between these two modalities of behavior. So, right again, it means both correct, which is based in truth, and moral, which means that the action, if taken, if acted upon, is in harmony with natural law. Actions based in it do not result in harm to other sentient beings. That's the definition of right. Now look at how simple that, that definition is. And, and think about it for a moment. We're talking about what is a right? Meaning, what do you have a right to do? And what you have a right to do is no different than what I have a right to do. What I'm telling you here is every single human being on this planet has the exact same rights. Not one person has one more right than another being. Not one person has one less right than another being. To think that anybody has more or less rights anywhere on the earth at any time in history is a fallacy. It is a lie. It is a deception. It is wrong. It is not correct. It is not based in truth. Rights are universal and the exact same for every human being. Blanket statement, absolute truth. Let the ego chew on it and deal with it. Okay? And again, the ego will have a hard time with this in many cases, with many people. They'll hear that and they'll want to throw a glass at me.